boys and girls. Today, as you can see, I'm wearing my teddy bear shirt because we're talking about teddy bears. This shirt came from when I was teaching school. A, a room mother had made this shirt and then had all the children's names on it. So I've kept it for a long time. The teddy bear that we're going to talk about got its name from our 26th president, Theodore Roosevelt, who was nicknamed Teddy. One day, someone took him out to shoot bears. And that was a popular sport in those days. And he saw a little baby bear and he said, oh, I'm not gonna shoot him, he's so sweet. And so the newspapers got a hold of the story and they called that little bear Teddy's Bear. Well, a toy maker got the brilliant idea I'm going to make a stuffed bear, and I'm going to leave the S off and call it Teddy Bear. And so that's how we got teddy bears over a hundred years ago, and that story is true. And in our story today, you're going to hear about a department store. Now maybe you've been to a department store like J.C. Penney's or Macy's or Kohl's. Well, when I was a little girl, there were department stores too. And the one I went to was called Marshall Fields and it was in Chicago, Illinois. And it had five or six floors. It was just huge. Most of our department stores today only have maybe three floors at the most, but those floors all had different things on them. Like one floor was for children's clothes, another for furniture, another for toys, another for books. There was even a whole floor of restaurants inside the store. So now that you know what a department store is, I'd like to read to you the story of Corduroy the Bear. This is the story of Corduroy the Bear. You can see from the cover, this is a very old book. My daughter had this when she was a little girl. Corduroy is a bear who lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she said, look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He lost the button on one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I lost a button. He said to himself, tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening when all the shoppers were gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from the shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stopped off the escalator and reached the next floor. And there, before his eyes, was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and even rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled into a large, thick mattress. All at once he saw something small and round. Why, that's my button, he cried. He tried to pick it up, but like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down. He yanked and pulled with both paws until pop, off came the button, and off the mattress corduroy toppled, being boing, boing, into a tall floor lamp. 
over the lap went with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going on his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now, who in the world did that? he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over the sofa and the beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. Then he saw the teddy bear's fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Well, hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning, and there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night, I counted, and I saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put you in a box? Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight into her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside a girl-sized bed, there stood a little bear bed, just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like the enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know, I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. Well, boys and girls, that's the story of Corduroy. Goodbye, boys and girls. See you next time.